Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Jean Tierney was a girl with sculptured high cheekbones, full lips and a sultry air of glamour and exotic cat-like green eyes. Tierney's on-screen presence and ability to transform into a variety of characters made her a film legend. Her personal life was a whirlwind of romance. She lived an exciting and glamorous life, but her middle years were plagued by tragedy, divorce and mental illness. How was Jean Tierney's brain destroyed by electroshock therapy? Make sure to watch the video until the end to find out why it took great courage for Tierney to come out with her personal story. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. It's sometimes unbelievable how on the outside someone can look like they have it all, but not. No matter how many times that seems to be the case, one never seems to be able to get used to it. Jean Tierney was one such person, a beautiful woman from a wealthy family who became a top movie star, had an affair with a future president, married a man who became a top designer and had two children. It all sounds great, except the marriage was a volatile one, one daughter was born severely retarded and sensory deprived, which Tierney blamed on her own fame. Riddled with guilt, she ultimately had a severe breakdown. You would never have known it to see this goddess in Laura, for which she is perhaps best remembered, and Leave Her to Heaven, in which, in my opinion, she was at her most beautiful and as the manipulative hard Isabel in The Razor's Edge. Jean Tierney was a dream movie star, but when a WAC quarantined with German measles escaped from her barracks to meet her favourite actress, the result was Tierney's damaged daughter Daria, and that one action by a fan changed Tierney's life forever. There's even a movie based on it, The Mirror Cracked. Tierney never forgave herself. At one point, her second daughter came home from school to find the apartment building surrounded by people as her mother stood on a ledge. As mentioned above, Tierney was able to have another child and find true love in her next marriage. Although wonderful and beautiful in her small part in advice and consent, in the 60s she found herself too nervous in front of the camera and did less and less until her death from emphysema. The smoking was to lower her high-pitched voice, something the studios recommended. My videos are usually about very interesting and fascinating stories, but they're also often very sad. Angela Lansbury once said when performers are working, they truly do wear a mask. Thierry's was a most beautiful one, hiding a good deal of sorrow. Called the most beautiful woman in movie history by Daryl Zanuck, founder of 20th Century Fox, the former New York debutante seemed to have it all. She had a bright and privileged start in life, was successful on Broadway by the age of 20, was acclaimed as an actress of great merit, starring in many A-grade movies playing opposite some of Hollywood's finest, Tyrone Power. Walter Houston, Spencer Tracy, Henry Fonda, Rex Harrison, Clark Gable, Clifton Webb, Vincent Price, and Humphrey Bogart, to name but a few, was nominated for a Best Actress Award and was courted by many of the world's prominent men, including Prince Ali Khan, Howard Hughes, and a young John F. Kennedy. A lot of ink has been spilled covering the lives of history's most influential figures, but how much of the forest is lost for the trees? Born on November 19, 1920, Jean Tierney was indeed one of the most beautiful actresses to have graced the screen. Today's publicity still is certainly testament to that. Born in Brooklyn, Tierney was the daughter of Howard S. Tierney, a successful Manhattan insurance broker who helped groom her for stardom. Tierney had a privileged upbringing, attending private schools in Connecticut and Switzerland. Her father formed a corporation to promote her, although they later had a falling out over her marriage to Cassini and business disagreements. The green-eyed beauty with the impossibly chiselled cheekbones was breathtaking. Jean started modelling and appeared in several Broadway shows. By the time she reached her late teens, she was already a head-turner, pursuing an acting career. Starting on Broadway, she was soon spotted by Hollywood mogul Daryl Zanuck, who put her under contract to 20th Century Fox and rapidly ascended the ladder to stardom by the early 40s. She made her film debut in the 1940 western Return of Frank James. 
Highly attractive as a screen presence with a desire to perpetually improve herself, Tierney soon shared the screen with most of Fox's leading males. But once she seemed to be on the road to instant fame, her early career faltered. All the while, she felt pressure to look her best, which included a strict diet to maintain her weight. In an attempt to lower her voice, which she complained sounded like an angry Minnie Mouse, she also became a heavy smoker. Tierney was a major star in her twenties, was one of World War II's most notable pin-ups, and was also nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress by the age of 25, but life off the screen continued to cause her problems. In private, however, Tierney's life was far more complicated. She fell in love with actor Robert Sterling, but ended it because her parents didn't approve. Jean became estranged from her father when she discovered he had cheated on her mother. Her on-again, off-again marriage to Hollywood designer Oleg Cassini, who later designed for Jacqueline Kennedy, with whom she had eloped to Las Vegas in 1941, was fraught with problems. Her parents were against the marriage. They had two daughters together, however the tumultuous relationship just added to her depression, though they remained good friends to the end. After Tierney's death, Cassini in an interview described Tierney as the luckiest unlucky girl in the world. All of her dreams came true at a cost. Hit movies like Laura, Heaven Can Wait and The Razor's Edge made her one of the country's most popular actresses. She was nominated for an Oscar for her performance in the 1945 drama Leave Her to Heaven. Jean and Oleg separated in 1945 and she started a romance with future President John F. Kennedy. She was devastated when John refused to marry her, so she decided to reconcile with Oleg. It was thought that Tierney's bipolar disorder was triggered by the birth of her first daughter, who was born deaf, partially blind and severely mentally handicapped. She was ultimately placed in institutional care at the age of four, triggering ongoing bouts of manic depression throughout the rest of Tierney's life. She came perilously close to committing suicide in 1957 by attempting to jump off a ledge at her mother's apartment, 14 stories high above Manhattan, but stopped just in time. I must have stood there for 20 minutes. I was totally without fear, and I thought, what's the point of living? What saved her, she said, was vanity. I thought of what I'd looked like when I hit the ground, like a scrambled egg. That didn't appeal to me. If I was going to die, I wanted to be in one piece. It was Humphrey Bogart who discovered the extent of Tierney's mental problems while they were filming The Left Hand of God in 1953. Bogart knew the signs. He had a sister who suffered from mental illness. He encouraged her to seek help. Shortly after, she was admitted to Harkness Pavilion in New York, and then the Institute of Living in Hartford, Connecticut, where she underwent over 30 shock treatments. During the 1950s, she was in and out of mental hospitals as she battled her demons. In all, she spent some six years in institutions. After receiving shock therapy for her illness, Tierney was unable to remember lines, and although she attempted a return in 1959, she was unable to complete the project and she was replaced. She was rescued by the authorities, however it did significant damage to her career. The doctors told me, if you break an arm or a leg it takes months for it to really heal, and years for it to be the same again, so you can imagine the problems with a broken mind. Of course, knowing the trouble is going to come back isn't easy, but I just have to face that fact and know I'll muddle through. Everybody's pulling for me. I'm as happy as I can be. Even the voices that I hear are sweet. After a lengthy stay, Tierney attempted to blend back into society, one that was far from the lights of Hollywood. She took a job as a saleswoman in a dress shop, but it wasn't long before a customer recognised her. Several newspapers were quick to print sensational articles, especially considering Tierney's status in Hollywood and how she suddenly seemed to disappear from the industry. 20th Century Fox was quick to offer up a role. Tierney agreed but dropped out after only a few days into production due to the stress. She returned to the Menninger Clinic afterwards. Despite all the love and support one could ask for, depression has proven to be a relentless disease that knows no sympathy. Tierney was able to perform well in several roles in the 1960s, 
However, her age and some personal issues made her retire from feature films in 1964. She was quoted as stating that she didn't like the scripts being offered to her and from acting altogether in 1969. Although she was offered significant sums to return to television or even bit roles in films, she remained away from Hollywood for the remainder of her life. So while Tierney was a decent performer in the 1940s with some glimmers of greatness even into the early 60s, her mental illness and aspects of her personal life seem to have combined to make her unable to achieve higher levels of accomplishment. Had things gone differently, it's conceivable that she could have ranked among the best female actors of the golden age of Hollywood. After years of treatment, including electroshock therapy that erased portions of her life from her memory, she triumphantly returned in one of the biggest comebacks in Hollywood history. Luckily for Tierney, she was able to put the pieces of stability together for a comeback. After a seven-year absence, Tierney appeared in the 1962 film Advise and Consent, starring Henry Fonda. It wasn't a top-billing role, but despite all she had overcome, her appearance was a great personal achievement. She would appear in three more films before announcing her retirement from the industry. After a handful of television appearances, Tierney released an autobiography titled Self-Portrait in 1979. In the memoir, she discussed her battles with depression and mental illness and took a stance against electroshock therapy, claiming it had significantly destroyed portions of her memory. With everything out in the open, Tierney seemed to be at peace. Self-portrait helped break the mystique about mental illness. It wasn't a secret to be whispered about, or a speculated piece of gossip in a tabloid magazine. It was something that should be discussed openly. At the end of the day, serious discussion is the foundation of education. The debutante turned movie star revealed that she had been numb and on the edge of exhaustion. I knew nothing about electric shock therapy and I don't think the doctors at the time knew much more. It was then considered a scientific breakthrough, although opinion was divided about the potential for long-term harm. The treatment was developed in Italy in 1938. Doctors soon began to use it to treat schizophrenia and cases of severe depression. But even more than electric shock treatment, Jean feared the cold pack. To me, the cold pack was the worst indignity of my confinement. It was not meant to be cruel or inhuman or to punish you. The cold pack was simply one of the ways of rearranging your mind, of shocking you back into sanity, or so the doctors hoped. When my time came, I felt only that I had been dehumanised. I was wrapped from the neck down in icy wet bed sheets, my arms strapped to my sides. It was like being buried in a snowbank. Tears poured down my cheeks as the minutes ticked away. I couldn't move. I lost the feeling in my hands and feet. My mind was in a panic. Of course, knowing the trouble is going to come back isn't easy, but I just have to face that fact and know I'll muddle through. Was Jean Tierney a good actress? Hmm, we may never know. While she was good in the vehicles in which she starred, Tierney suffered from mental illness, specifically manic depression, for the majority of her adult life. While this seemed to have been manageable for some time, by the early 1950s it began to affect her film performances, and she had to drop out of a major film, Magambo, and she spent much of the remainder of the decade institutionalised or in seclusion. Sadly, Jean Tierney was one of the very few who came through to recount her experiences, with the vast majority of the stars having their lives ravaged by this horrendous disorder and thus retreating from public life. With mental illness still carrying an unbearable stigma, it took great courage for Tierney to come out and tell her story to a world that looked upon her as a flawless star and idol. Despite the constant struggle, the perpetual battle of fighting myself, as she characterised it, Tierney refused to give up. She's remarkably unconcerned with her Hollywood legacy. Unlike contemporary stars who go into hospitals for exhaustion or talk about mental health issues only if they're outed, Tierney faced the issue unsparingly and with humour. She always tried to manage her illness rather than be a victim of it. And she had tremendous spirit.
If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Jean Tierney's story is truly heartbreaking, but not the only one, like the talented actress Frances Farmer, whose meteoric rise to stardom was truncated by bouts of bipolar disorder and long periods of involuntary confinement to mental institutions. If you are curious how Frances Farmer eventually found peace and happiness in life, check out my video about her story.